why are we still here? Just to suffer every night. Welcome back. My name is Key, and this is my dominatrix, Egg McGuffin. The Emoji Movie is an animated film that released on July 28, 2017. And I'm not kidding when I say I genuinely consider it to be a reason that 2017 is one of the worst years of my life. This movie had been plagued with bad press from the minute that its trailer dropped in December 2016. If you go to the trailers now, at least on the official Sony pages, you'll find that likes and ratings are disabled. But don't worry, the official trailer had much more positive reviews. The Emoji Movie released a critical acclaim and made a whopping one emoji million dollars over 20 times its budget. The movie also became somewhat of a social landmark. It was all the cool boys and girls talked about in middle school for a whole year. Okay, all irony aside, this movie made $217 million in the box office, which is four times more than what it cost to actually make the film, so that'd be considered a critical success by most means. That would be the case if the ratings weren't worse than my girlfriend, who was totally real by the way, rates me in bed. It released a critically negative scores. 6% on Rotten Tomatoes alone says a lot. But I really want to speak to the people on Rotten Tomatoes who gave this movie over a 60%. I really just want to talk. I just want to talk. That's all. To the movie's credit, it did release during the emoji craze. If you guys remember, it was like a big thing between like around early 2015 to early 2019 where emojis were everywhere. You could get emoji pop sockets, you could get emoji backpacks, you could get emoji plushies, you could get emoji dildos, pretty much anything those marketers could get their grubby little mitts on. Mainly though, it was seemed to be the laughing emoji, the smiling emoji, and for some reason, the poop emoji. I could make a whole other video about kids liking gross out humor, but honestly, I need to take this sh one struggle at a time right now. I think we can all agree that there's a pretty big jump to be made between a phone fixture for a middle schooler and a $50 million animated movie. This movie was primarily marketed toward children, which makes sense. To be fair, if I was 14 and had a severe learning disability, I would probably like this movie too. But I think we've all had enough of the handshake. Let's get to the hand job of this review. This movie actually starts out with a TJ Miller monologue, which is actually kind of funny because it's probably the last one that he ever gave. And we learn that this movie actually takes place in the phone of a young Andrew Tate. This movie takes place in some caricature ass world where kids are always on their cell phone, but specifically revolves around one joke where kids don't have the attention span to type out full words. So that's where the emojis come in. I, I can't ever say I've been that lazy, but maybe I wasn't a teenager in 2015. Also, this kid's phone is filled with the weirdest apps. Like, there's real apps in here, notably Instagram, Twitch, and Shazam, but these are all, all next to these weird fake apps, and it feels so weird. We learned that the emojis live in this dystopian society where they live to perform one job perfectly every day, day in and day out, as well as them all fitting into their prescribed role perfectly 24-7, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it. I guess I guess you could consider it to be method acting, they want to stay in character for the few times that they're actually portraying that character, but why? You'd think they'd have it down by now. I think one of the reasons this movie isn't fun to watch is because the art style is so inoffensive, and at the same time, the characters feel so over-animated. They move like 40 miles an hour just to give a thumbs up. But the problem arises when our main character, Meh, is incapable of conforming to society, much like a Steven Universe fan trying to act normal in band class. We learned that this is actually his first day on the job, which actually brings up a couple world bending problems. How was he conceived? How are the three of a single emoji in the same phone and why? And how does age work? Like genuinely, if this kid got his phone when he was born, how are these emojis middle-aged with a son? We meet his parents and they're not too enthralled about him having his first day on the phone, so they decide to take him into the bathroom to have a nice private conversation. His parents decide he's not ready for his first day on the job and immediately get smacked in the face with a door. Meh, the main character, not either of the parents, gives a spiel about how he needs to work in the wage cage because all the other kids get to, and there's no way for him to prove that he's able to do it besides than just to do it. And for some reason, his parents oblige to his request. We meet this lady, Smiler, and her whole thing is that she's overly positive, but you probably could have guessed that. Oh, and she's a dick. She doesn't really like people touching her or talking to her unprompted, so she's basically the Ellen DeGeneres of this universe, and I want to dropkick her. She explains that she's the system supervisor, and she earned this title by being the first emoji ever created. She then goes on to explain how the system works, and to this movie's credit, I actually think it's a pretty cool and well-designed system. The animation from where they switch to emoji to emoji is actually pretty cool. But it's like, why the fuck do you have this whole system to do this? I could have accomplished the same effect with a photocopier and a half-to-use bottle of lube. We meet High Five, he's a white High Five hand, but Alex isn't white. And also he's played by James Corden, so he's immediately the worst character in the film. One of the movie's biggest annoyances is that all of its humor is just jokes about the fact that they're emojis, and it gets really old fast. The poop emoji says duty and everyone laughs. Handy says in the nose bleeds and a nose emoji shows up. Like it's really fucking annoying. Meh hops into his wage cage, which is said as a joke earlier, 
but it's actually kind of funny that it's actually a little box. It makes the wage cage joke feel a little funnier. We see the user of the phone, Alex, who was learning about hieroglyphics in middle school. Also, the thumbs up emoji is dark skin. So clearly this movie doesn't know what type of nigga this nigga is supposed to be. Ethnically ambiguous bitch ass. Unsurprisingly, meh, wigs the f*** out and ruins everything. The wrong emoji gets sent and everybody treats it like it's emoji 911. I feel like I feel like there's some canonical way that we can prove that an emoji 911 actually happened. They tell him to get out of the cage for whatever reason and then this happens. I don't really get why he needed to evacuate in the first place. Like we already fumbled the bag. Why the fuck would he even try to use that same emoji again? Smiler questions his identity as a meh harder than I question my own gender most nights. And he says that he's a malfunction, which sounds like a slur. Smiler says that they're gonna hold a board meeting to figure out what to do with him and Meh's parents say that she should just hide out in their apartment, which is honestly a good idea, but Meh takes this as his parents being embarrassed of him. Also, maybe I just missed it earlier, but they casually mention that his name is Gene here, but I'm gonna call him Mr. Takovic. If you're a Breaking Bad fan, good for you. If you're not a Breaking Bad fan, go watch all of Breaking Bad and then all of Better Call Saul, El Camino is optional, and then come back to this review. That's a joke, by the way. There's actually not gonna be spoilers. That, that's, that's just a funny bit. You don't need to, don't, don't worry about that. But Mr. Takovic decides to go figure out what type of emoji he really is. Huh. Maybe this movie actually is a metaphor about being gay. Mr. Takovic quickly finds out that the meeting didn't go well. She invites him inside for a quick little chat, but actually decides to assassinate him. Well, I guess just murder him. But with some quick thinking, he gets out of there. And also, this is the worst transition in a major motion picture I have ever seen. Handy sneaks into the VIP lounge and we see all these VIP emojis that make no sense. Much less sense for a 14 year old boy. Coffee, beer, dice, really? But, but Handy got kicked out. The high five emoji got kicked out. Yeah, sure. For whatever reason, Mr. Takovic decides to run through the VIP section to get away and Handy saves his life. Handy takes Mr. Takovic to the loser lounge where the emojis that never get used go. And surprisingly, this raises two more questions. One, what 14 year old boy in 2017 wasn't using the eggplant emoji? Even if the rioters put this in ironically as a joke, it's not really that funny if you have to think about it that hard. And secondly, what if for some reason the emojis that never get used do need to be used? Do they have to just sprint over there at a moment's notice? Also, joke inside a joke, what about the actual sprinting emoji, like the running people emoji? Are there just people, like humans inside phones? Like, yeah, sure, they probably look like emojis, but these are just regular ass people emojis, right? Handy casually mentions that Mr. Takovic can actually be reprogrammed by a hacker emoji named Jailbreak that lives inside the piracy app. I just read all that out loud, so I'm pretty sure that means that Jesus Christ isn't actually gonna do that second coming after all. But Mr. Takovic also says that maybe she can do some mumbo jumbo plot convenience bullshit and get Handy back into the VIP section. So I guess he's a main character now. He tells this wagon to talk to the hand and then says bye Felicia to the grandma emoji and then I contemplated suicide. They sneak out using these emojis as disguises and then reach the end of the text app. Once again, I think it's another thing that's designed well, but it's pretty hard to f this up in concept. Like it's the end of an app. It's just, it's just kind of a, it just looks kind of nice, I guess. They call this the wallpaper, but I think we can all agree that home screen would have been a better name. I don't know why they call it the wallpaper. The wallpaper changes, but the fixtures that they're going inside to will always be there. We see Mr. Takovic's parents arguing and to be honest i think their banter is actually kind of funny i got a good amount of air out of my nose from it but their banter ends with them deciding to go find gene themselves but a bot overhears and now smiler is tracking them they find the piracy app sorry i didn't touch on this earlier the piracy app really the piracy app there's just an app where they just where they just do piracy and to be fair it's masked as a library app but they call it a skin implying it's just something they overlaid on top of it right so when he went to download this, it was still just a piracy app. A f piracy app? I okay, okay. Back to the point. After entering the piracy app, Handy is killed immediately. In here we meet spam, viruses, and internet trolls, and the Trojan horse. The Trojan horse doesn't offer much protection and gives jailbreak away pretty easily. You guys like that? It's a joke about condoms. Did you, did you get it? It's pretty funny, right? She's really cold to both Mr. Takovic and Handy at first, but she decides to help them out when she sees that Mr. Takovic isn't like the other man emojis and actually has f***ing emotions. Oh, and these guys actually f***ing die. Our group escapes through a secret tunnel and ends up in Candy Crush. They try to get him out through the top, but that doesn't work. So they have to win Candy Crush without getting him caught in the crossfire. And Jailbreak is awfully on board to them for someone who's pretty against the idea of even talking to these guys two minutes and 23 seconds ago. But during all of this, they end up cucking Alex again because his phone ends up making all the Candy Crush sounds that they're making. So he calls, 
he calls Wireless Wireless and sets up an appointment to bring his phone in. He's had two minor inconveniences with it and decides to go get his phone serviced, making him the most proactive male to exist ever. The council finds out that he has a phone appointment made and that his intention is to actually erase the phone. But like, why? Like I said, this nigga got two glitches and his first reaction was like, I cut that shit. Like he, he didn't hesitate at all. Jailbreak says they need to get to the cloud, but to do that, they need to get from Candy Crush to the Just Dance app. The, the Just Dance phone app? That's gotta be an ad. Cause I've never heard of the Just Dance phone app before. But after making their way through the Just Dance app, they can get to the Dropbox, which then they can access the cloud through. She says that they'll need to get past a firewall though, but she can't because it requires facial recognition, but she's tried and got locked out for life. Mr. Takovic then finishes off by assuming that because he can make other faces, he's the key to getting through. And then for some reason, she says she's mad because women are always coming up with stuff that men are taking credit for. Which, although it's true, why did they say that here? Mr. Takovic's parents go into YouTube and hopes to find him there. Once again, this made me chuckle, but this is more from nostalgia than it is from the fact that it's actually legitimately funny. I didn't laugh when I watched this in 2017. That also brings up another problem with the film. It's really fucking dated. Remember that by Felicia line I mentioned earlier? That was like 2015 and Pen Pen Apple Apple Pen came out in 2016. So I guess there's really some leeway there. When you think about the fact that movies like this tend to have a two year production cycle, you have to realize that this was just any random viral video that they plugged in to put here at the last minute. Like Pen Pen Apple Apple Pen came out in 2016. So there's clearly some leeway here. I think they make a reference about how expressive the guy is. But this is clearly some shit they wrote last minute or close to it. Regardless, my point being, it's still really dated. The dad emoji says that they're being followed and the mom emoji distracts the robots with cat videos. Once again, their banter in the scene makes me laugh. I think it's because the post-ironic humor that I have. Like, I think it's funny that they talk in these monotone voices but have real arguments. But to me, this shit wasn't funny as a kid in 2017. But after distracting the robots, mommy emoji decides that she needs to split up from daddy emoji because she's not married to the same man she used to be. I could play you this entire last scene where they actually had a dialogue interaction with each other, but it wouldn't make sense as to why she comes to this conclusion. We return back to the A plot and Mr. Takovic actually casually mentions that there was never a hacker emoji. And for some reason, a princess emoji is mysteriously missing. I wonder who Jailbreak could be. Anyway, they arrive at Just Dance and the only thing Jailbreak says that they have to do is not turn on Just Dance, so Handy decides to immediately turn on Just Dance. And this of course leads to the robots finding them. They have to dance their way out and Jailbreak says she's got no groove. So of course we get a prolonged dance scene and it's really funny, trust me, but I'm going to skip it because I want to gatekeep it for myself. You know for a fact, if this movie was made in 2020, they would be flossing in this scene. They also have this free dance scene and the whole thing is just cringe. And Jailbreak says, you're killing it, Mr. Takovic slay and every day we stray further from god's light after dancing too hard jailbreak's weave comes off and it's revealed that she's actually a white woman the robots come in and it's revealed that they actually have some sick ass dance moves much to our team's dismay all the just dance causes alex some disturbance in real life when his phone begins to make sounds again and he deletes the app we actually have to watch this just dance lady die and it sucks because she's actually personified really well and was actually kind of fun also smash Oh, and high five fucking dies. Thank God. And Jailbreak and Mr. Takovic make it to Dropbox as it was directly on the other side of it. But he decides that getting handy out of the trash is more important than getting reprogrammed because he's not a dick. And Jailbreak quickly realizes that being not a dick is actually pretty cool. Jailbreak says that they can take a shortcut through Spotify. And I swear to God, I'm gonna get copyright claimed from all of this product placement. Spotify sponsor me though. Smiley is one of the robot steroids and my wife's still alive, so that's cool. There are four different licensed songs in this scene where they make their way to the trash. Alex finds out that Addie, the girl that he's been texting throughout the movie, is going to the promenade that's actually near his phone appointment tonight. And that's it. That's actually, that's actually the whole scene. It lasts like 25 seconds. They arrive at the trash and I think it's funny because you can tell that Alex got his phone taken away at some point. 
because he once sent an email to Addy. I can't be the only one who had a middle school experience where we were emailing the girl I liked because I didn't have a phone. So that's kind of funny. But after that, Mr. Takovic saves Handy from certain doom and they make their way back to Dropbox. We get a scene of Mom OG having empty nest syndrome and next she runs into Dad OG. Turns out that Dad OG can cry because he's secretly an empath and they make their way off to find their son. The problem with the scene is that they split up and then got back together without any time passing. I didn't skip anything. These scenes actually happened directly after each other. So I just feel like they shouldn't have set up this way or had something happen in between this scene and this scene to make it make more sense. Just then the devil from the Bible appears. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised Jailbreak doesn't say, oh, he's right behind me, isn't he? They get chased around and decide to split up and end up just getting the bot to tie himself up. And they make it back to Dropbox in no time at all, really. But this raises the question of why they used all the shortcuts in the first place. The apps are clearly all within walking distance of each other. I mean, we only see four pages with the phone apps when we see Alex's phone earlier in the movie. So I don't get the point of all the shortcuts. It's clearly just fluff and filler to make the story longer. They arrive at the firewall and Jailbreak feeds Mr. Takovic passwords, but every time his expressions are wrong, he gets just a little bit closer to earning his black card. But it turns out the password to his Dropbox is just the name of the girl he liked. When I was 14, I didn't do shit like this. Like this email, first off, is a creepy as fuck. What kid uses the word ecstasy to describe his feelings towards someone? Man did the right thing to delete that shit because he would be on a watch list had he sent that. They get through and I'm both confused on how Jailbreak got not only locked out, but why facial recognition matters. We get a whole montage of Gene failing to get through the thing and he uses a different face every time. And it seems like he just used a random one wherever he used the right password anyway. So I don't really get it. But because this is a movie, Mr. Takovic decides he doesn't want to be a real boy anymore. Mr. Takovic tells Jailbreak how he feels and she rejects him. And he's left with an intense feeling of Alex Thema. Oh, and the bad guys are here. Jailbreak uses her princess powers to summon Twitter, which is supposedly because she has an OnlyFans. Just before Mr. Takovic is killed, his parents come in and his dad reveals that he's also a bisexual, but Smiler doesn't give a f and just decides to kill them both anyway. The literal f sh emoji decides to tell her to cool her f jets and then Smiler threatens to turn him into a sh stain. Handy and Jailbreak come to save the day and then Jailbreak does some hacking sh She has some trouble doing some hacking sh and then gets thrown off the robot and then Handy presses a button and it's a off switch and then that's over. We get this cute little heart to heart Bruh. and Alex officially makes the dumbass decision to delete his whole ass phone. Mr. Takovic says that if he can get Alex to connect with Addy, then he may not wipe his whole phone. In reality though, the two things are entirely unrelated, but okay. Jailbreak says that she can only buy him enough time to send one singular emoji. Everyone tries to figure out who they should send as if this isn't all happening because they have an emoji that can be literally every emoji at once. Smiler says that emoji should only be straight and then Jailbreak reveals that she's also bisexual and her name is actually Linda. That's kind of a downgrade, but whatever. Linda says that he needs to be himself and we get this cute little montage of emotions and sh And oh my God, this movie is so done to death. We get this really cringy scene and this weird ass emoji gets sent and everybody loses their fucking minds over it. Addie says that it's actually really hot that he has more than one emotion and she needs to date him right now or she will beat Alex to death. He decides to take his phone back without permissions from the workers and everything is restored back to normal because this is a movie and this bullshit is allowed to happen sometimes. Everyone is happy and the dad reveals that he's actually gay for his own son. Consider me shocked, but it ends like a kid's movie and Mr. Takovic is the talk of the town. Everyone loves him and he's super popular and everyone loves him and everyone does the emoji pop. Ah! I think message of this movie is that everyone's a little bit bisexual or something like that. Genuinely though, all things aside, it's not a shocker that this movie got the terrible reception that it did. For starters, this movie would be considerably shorter if the characters made decisions that actually made sense, as well as if the film was consistent on the size of the wallpaper. Like I said earlier, we see that Alex's phone isn't even that packed with apps and we see how large these apps are. It's about the size of one city block or smaller. So even if they wanted to walk to, from one side of the phone to the other, it couldn't take more than 20 minutes. And what's worse is this actually ends up being the case. When they end up getting handy from the trash, they end up getting back to Dropbox in about five minutes. It required a shortcut to get there, but the shortcut was undoubtedly longer on the way back to the Dropbox. The characters in this movie aren't great. High Five is stupid and his plot means nothing. 
Not only did he not get what he wanted in the end because everyone got into the VIP lounge, but he served genuinely no purpose as a character. He didn't help our main character grow, he himself didn't grow, he provided nothing to the plot except to extend it. He genuinely served no purpose. Our main character is okay, he's nothing special, he has emotions, he's a decent person. Which also, quick side note about the emotions in this film, all the emojis have emotions. They have like a characteristic. We see the smile emoji with a broken arm and he's laughing at it. That's, I mean, he, it's, and the emotion is that he's still really f***ing upset. He's just smiling while he's upset. And all of the emojis unanimously get sad and shocked when they realize that they're about 10 minutes from meeting their maker. Jailbreak is pretty harmless. I don't really have criticism for her character. Once again, when she was originally introduced, she was avidly against the idea of even talking to Jean or Handy. But then maybe like two minutes later, she's all on board with this. I think it's because she has an ultimatum, but it's never really that clear. Smile is probably the best character in this movie. She probably has the best writing and her character isn't that annoying, but she can be a bit much at some times. The music in this movie is awful and that's because maybe 90% of it's licensed. This movie does have a score, but not one song that really raises the tension or adds to the moment at all, and it's really forgettable altogether. The locations are pretty cool, all things considered. The design for Spotify is actually really nice, and Imojopolis or whatever the fuck it's called looks nice, but it's basically just Cloud Cuckoo Land from Lego Movie and New York City if they hate each other. The art and animation in this movie isn't bad at all. It's a $50 million movie, so you can expect that, but it's just really basic and that's sometimes over animated and it can really get distracting, especially in the first 15 or so minutes of the movie. But the worst thing about this movie is its comedy, or rather its excuse for comedy. If I ever have a kid and they make a joke that sounds anything remotely like it would have come out of the Emoji Movie 2017, well, it's important to remember that we can always try again, make another kid. 17 more years. The jokes are all about how they're emojis and 2015 to 2017 internet humor. And it's not funny. And it's not good for the health, aging, or longevity in this film. But to be fair, neither is TJ Miller's presence in it. This movie really should never be witnessed by anyone. It will probably replace the death penalty and I would not wish it upon my worst enemy. This movie will be getting a 2 out of 10 on the critical score. The one point is for the animation being good, but nothing else is getting a point. It's absolute garbage. But for the fun score, it's gonna get a 4 out of 10. It's fun to make fun of, but not fun to watch. Like, I wouldn't watch it alone, but with a friend, have fun. I really can't give it anything higher than that for both categories. Well, me and Mr. Egg McGuffin are gonna get back to our daily Friday routine of playing badminton while blindfolded. We're practicing to become Daredevil. <laughs> He's right, we are going to be season 2 Daredevil. Make sure you join us next week where we'll be covering the man, the myth, the Morbius. <laughs> no. Hello, this is post-production key. Uh, well, I'm just interrupting your time to say if you made it this far into the video, I'd honestly appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. Don't worry, it can be, it can be our little secret. Nobody has to know. Also, sharing, that helps out a lot. These videos honestly take a really long uh, time to make. Like, for this one, I think it was somewhere near, like, 15 hours. Um, I love making them, don't get me wrong, but I would I would appreciate if you guys would share these around uh, or just leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. Uh, know that you're liking the content and that I am worth meeting PewDiePie. Maybe not, but the point still stands that you should... Uh, probably, probably subscribe. Um, anything else? If you're asking where Kennedy is, uh, he died. Um, I actually recorded this video three weeks ago and I got in a car accident and he was in the passenger seat. Uh, rip in peace. But, uh, I will see you guys next week for the Morbius video, which I am very excited to make. Um, I haven't even seen it yet. I haven't even actually seen it yet. So that's gonna be a lot. Of, that's gonna be a lot of fun to uh, to make. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Uh, good night, or good morning, or uh, good evening. Gabby Bell, please notice me.